Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. So today we're going to be looking at some of my favorite plants. Um, and that's because we are going to be going through my moss pole collection. So basically all of the plants that I have currently growing up moss poles. And I believe I have over 20. So there is quite a few and a lot of them are my favorites. I love growing plants climbing specifically up moss poles because it's just so satisfying to see them root in and then start to size up their leaves. It's definitely been a little bit of a learning process for me and I will say that moss poles do require a significant amount of maintenance so they're not for everyone and I definitely have my bouts where I'm not keeping up with them properly um, but in general I think that the work is worth the results that you can get and yeah I'm just I'm still figuring it out myself honestly like there's a lot of mistakes that I've made I used to make my moss poles super thin which you'll see some of them and now I make them a lot thicker um, I'm still using for my DIY poles this plastic hardware mesh which is not bad like it, it works pretty well but I do think that I'm going to be switching to a metal like wire mesh just so that they're more sturdy because for example this has the main moss pole and then it has one extension on it and this is sturdy the way that it is right now but if I were to add a third extension onto this plastic hardware mesh then it would get quite topsy-turvy. Um, and over time, it can get a little bit, you know, tipsy. So I think that I'm just going to switch over to the wire mesh and just, you know, I've heard that that's supposed to be a lot more sturdy. So I'm excited for once I've used all my hardware mesh, it's almost used up, and then I can switch over to the wire stuff. Um, so that's just an example of something that I've kind of you know, learnt, learnt that lesson the hard way um, along my journey. And maybe there will be a time and place to use the plastic. Trial and error is such a big part of this hobby, like such a big part. Most of the things I've learned, I feel like it has been through my own mistakes. And honestly, that's one of the best ways to learn. And that's the reason that I love the plant community so much because we can learn from each other. Um, we can share what has been successful for us, what we would have done differently. Um, and yeah, I just love that aspect of being able to kind of like learn and grow together. And of course, some things will work for some people, but not for others. So you just kind of have to like take what works for you and leave the rest. But anyways, now I'm getting off on a tangent. <laughs> I actually don't plan to talk a ton in this video about maintenance or making these moss poles specifically. If you are looking for that information, I did a moss pole video last year, um, which is kind of what inspired this one because I did a video where I showed all the plants that I was growing on moss poles and I like um, talked about how I maintain them. And I also did a demo of making them like a DIY one, a DIY one like this. So if you are interested in just like more information in general about growing on moss poles, I will link that video down below for you to check out. But for today, it is just gonna be a fun little, I guess, collection type video. I'm just gonna be showing you everything that I've got. I really like doing this style of video, um, like my philodendron collection, Hoya collection, um, even like my whole house plant tour, because it's really fun for me to kind of document the progress. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna be checking them all out today. I hope that you enjoy this video. Um, if you have any comments or questions or anything, make sure you leave them down below. Also, make sure you check out the description box because I'm going to, I have a few different styles of moss poles that I'm currently using in my collection. Um, so if you're interested in, in any of them, I will link like all the brands and everything where to buy down below. And I'm also going to link any related videos. So there's gonna be a lot of fun stuff in there. Anyways, this lovely guy right here is my Philodendron Splendid. This is one of my favorite plants, definitely one of my favorite philodendron, um, and one of the plants that I've had the most fun growing up a moss pole. So this is actually a, like technically, a propagation from my mother plant, which I, act I actually recently sold about a week or two ago. That plant had grown all the way to the top, so I ended up doing the chop and extend method. So basically the moss pole here, that's at the bottom of this one, was at the top of that one, I removed it. I've now started I've now started the top of the last plant to be the bottom of this plant, added a new extension, and now I'm growing up again. So the point of that is to retain the leaf size and to encourage it to just keep sizing up um, as it grows upwards. 
That kind of sounds complicated, but I know a lot of people are familiar with the chop and extend method. Um, so that's what I did. And this guy did struggle for a while because he really did not have much of a root system. I feel like it was a bit of a risky chop, but luckily Philodendron Splendid is just such a tough plant that it struggled for, you know, a few weeks and then it started bouncing back. Um, this is a new leaf that unfurled. This one was unfurling um, when I chopped it or it was, it was, it had emerged, but it hadn't unfurled. So then it unfurled afterwards. Um, so it didn't come out perfect, but we are going to be getting a new leaf up here, which is gonna be like the first official one that has been grown on after the chop and extend. And then there is a second vine in here and it put out this leaf after, it after the chop and extend and we're already getting another one. Right there, so I am very excited to see what that leaf is gonna look like and it actually looks like it is such a decent size. Like this is bigger than I was expecting from a plant that is just kind of like recovering from that chop and extend. I don't know if this second vine that's doing a little bit, bit better and settling in a bit quicker had a better root system. I don't really remember. It was a smaller plant though, so maybe since it had less leaves to sustain as it was developing that root system, um, it was just able to kind of adapt a little bit quicker. Anyways, nonetheless, it is doing really well. So I really wanted to give you guys this update because I did make a whole video where I performed this chop and extend, um, this risky chop and extend. Um, and yeah, he's just doing so well. And I'm just like so excited to see him grow up this moss pool because we do have quite a bit of room left. And I'm fairly confident that um, I will see a significant leaf size up by the time we're at the top here, especially with the second vine. Like that guy just really looks like he's like raring to go. So yeah, I'm just really excited to watch this grow. Like I said, it's one of my favorites. And I just wanted to show you that we do have like the, oh, there you can see, maybe the hand makes it worse. We do have like the very beginnings of a leaf starting to emerge from that caterpillar there. So I'm so excited about that. And why don't I show you a close up of this one while I'm here too. Oh my goodness. So, Exciting. <laughs> I know we have 20 plants to get through, so I'm probably not gonna talk that like that in depth about all of them, but my favorites, I do like to give a little extra info, you know? Sorry, I'm just gonna drink my tea for a sec. How nice does my plant wall look in the back? Like starting to trail down now into the wall, like how gorgeous, I'm so happy with it. Um, okay, so next we have another gorgeous velvet leaf philodendron. A lot of you may recognize this guy as my philodendron El Choco Red, another one that I absolutely love. Now I was debating whether I should put this in the video because it's technically not climbing up the moss pole yet, but it will be very, very soon. I'm basically just waiting for this leaf to harden off and everything, and then I can kind of pin this on. I mean, I could do it right now. I'm just, I don't know. I've just been waiting for that leaf to come out because the vine wasn't really long enough before to reach that, but now it is. So I'm gonna be using my plant Velcro to just um, secure this onto here. Look at the progress on this new leaf unfurling. Oh, I cannot wait to see it. It looks like it is a pretty decent size as well. And if you know the history of this plant, it um, had root rot, took a while to bounce back. It was like a beautiful lush plant, got root rot, had to completely chop it up. This is the top cut that has been bouncing back. And now we are kind of starting again um, with the whole growing on moss pole thing. This is a closed back moss pole, as you can see. And the benefit to these is uh, they retain moisture for longer. So the maintenance is definitely less than like the open moss poles that have more surface area exposed to the air. I find that plants root into here quickly. They root into these more and yeah, they're just a little bit easier to maintain. Um, I will say that the cons are that I don't think it's gonna be as stable as the DIY one, especially the DIY ones that are made out of a wire. Um, I just like, you can extend these um, and I think it would be okay with one extension on, but I just don't know about extending it any further than that. I haven't tried it yet, so I can't really speak on that, but that's just like, the feeling that I have about it. So I think for some of my plants that get really large or are very fast growers and need like a lot of length, this one usually has pretty tight internodes. So that's why I'm not too worried and I've decided to opt for this pole. But um, yeah, I just kind of like, 
I don't know, I just kind of think about the plant and its growth habits and its size um, and how heavy it's gonna get and everything when I decide what pole to give it. So I'm gonna try out this one with this pole. This is by the brand Thickly, I believe. Yes, it is. I do have a few different brands of this style of moss pole. Like I said, they will all be linked down below. You can pick, you know, where you wanna shop from if you are interested in purchasing anything. I don't have any affiliate links with these brands or anything. I just want to be able to give you guys all of the options. I've had really great luck growing Philodendron El Choco Red up a moss pole, so I'm very excited to watch this like root in and just kind of progress from there. I do find that they size up really quickly once they're growing on a moss pole. So yeah, that's my little update on this guy and I'm so excited to see this stunning leaf completely open up, like wow. I'm realizing that a lot of these plants have new leaves coming in, which is so exciting. <laughs> um, I guess I picked a good time to show this video so that we can all admire the new growth together. This is my lovely, beautiful philodendron billetier with, yes, a big new leaf on the way. Look at that. It's just unfurling. I measured this and it is a foot long um, and it obviously hasn't like completely unfurled or hardened off or anything yet. So I am really looking forward to seeing what like the final um, size is going to be. But I definitely feel like this is going to be the biggest or at least the longest one that I've gotten on this plant yet. It looks quite narrow, but maybe it will widen a little bit as it expands. Anyways, this plant has been so happy on a moss pole. Like I really, really recommend putting philodendron billetia on a moss pole for a few different reasons. One, um, they are just so wild and I feel like, just gonna peel off this crunchy caterpillar. So satisfying. Anyways, I feel like they just really need that structure. Like they're very sprawling. Look at how long some of these petioles are. They're very sprawling. They're very hard to tame. Um, before this one was in a moss pole, it was constantly falling over. It was flopping around everywhere. And it just, I don't know, I just wasn't really getting like the growth pattern that I wanted. But then I put it on this moss pole, which is one of my favorite types of moss poles to use. And this is a, uh, by a brand called Trifolia. And these are self-watering moss poles. So you purchase it, it comes like this, like you don't need to do anything because for the closed back ones, they just come as like a flat, Piece, piece of plastic and then you have to fill the moss and like construct them and everything. This, it just comes like it's ready to go. Um, you pour water into the top. There's this little funnel. You can leave it on or you can take it off. Um, makes it super easy to fill them up. They're very sturdy. You can use them in just regular like soil or potting mix and you can also use them in semi-hydro, which is really cool. I haven't chosen that yet, but I haven't chosen. I haven't tried that yet, but just with the style of base that comes with these, it is compatible with that. So yeah, I think that they're really versatile and I've just been really happy with these moss poles. I've been using these Trifolia moss poles for years. You'll see quite a few of my plants in my collection on them. Um, I think that they ship internationally as well. But yeah, I think that they're great, honestly. And Philodendron Billetier has been doing so well on here. I was showing in a recent video, like all of the roots that we have going into the moss. Like it's just so cool to see. But yeah, this one is doing so well. He's actually like getting to the top now, which I'm like, oh my goodness, I did not expect him to grow that fast, but I should have known, honestly, because this is one of my toughest philodendron. Like, you can do anything to this plant. You cannot water it for weeks. You can, you know, it's by living by a freaking heat vent. It doesn't care. It's so tough um, and it does grow fast. So I am going to have to add an extension on here, most likely, um, but yeah. Philodendron Billetier, love him so much. Living his best life on this pole. Okay, so this one right here is my Philodendron Painted Lady. Well, maybe I'll kind of show you the bottom half. This is my Philodendron Painted Lady. She's very full on the bottom. There's actually a couple vines in here now because she shot off a baby and she has grown up very tall. She's also on a Trifolia self-watering moss pole. She's been on this for years now. Um, so she does have some leaves up here towards the very top. She is looking, I will say she's looking not her best. Um, maybe I should sit over here so I can, so I can see you guys. My couch is so squeaky, by the way, if you're hearing sounds. Anyways, I've had this Philodendron Painted Lady for years. She has been one of my favorite plants for years. I've had such a good time growing her. I will say that she is kind of struggling right now and I haven't really been able to figure out why. Yeah, she's just like not really looking her best. I'm getting some damaged leaves, but I, like 
I don't know. I can't see any pests. I have treated her. Um, it could have been a watering issue, honestly. Could have been a light issue. I'm not really sure. And I've also dropped her twice recently. Not dropped her, but she's fallen over twice because she's just in this plastic pot. And that's my bad. Like this really should be in like a heavier cover pot because it's definitely very top heavy. Um, so yeah, she's fallen over twice and I broke off. This is actually my third time filming this video. <laughs> and the last time, the second time she fell was when I was filming the last time I filmed this video. It's a long story. The first time I filmed this video, I had all the plants set up behind me and it looked so nice, but then I just didn't have enough space. Like I was so cramped, I couldn't really show any of the plants. So I ended up refilming sitting here and then I went to edit that footage and the sound was unwell. So I'm really hoping that this mic doesn't fail me this time as well. <laughs> but anyways, this, the last time I was filming this video, um, I had her sitting over there waiting to talk about her and then she just fell like flat onto her face. Um, and broke off two of the leaves, which like two nice big ones too, which I'm kind of sad about. But yeah, if she, like she does have this new one coming in here, but it just doesn't, like she's losing size. Uh, she used to be giving me these really big, beautiful leaves. So I don't know if it's just like a winter thing, like she's maybe not getting enough light or temperature thing, or I'm not really sure, but she's like, reverting to smaller leaves. Um, she's really, she's rooted into the pole really well. So I don't think it's like a pole issue or anything, but yeah, she's just not doing great. I'm debating like chopping her up and starting over, but I don't know, I might just wait. Like this second vine here is continuing to grow and that will eventually like fill in the plant. But yeah, she's, you know, she's going through a little bit of a rough patch but I love her so much regardless. And she's just been such a rewarding plant for me to grow over the years. She doesn't have a ton of irrigation anymore. I really think that you need quite high light to get like that really nice, like yellowy irrigation and to bring out the pink petioles. Um, so yeah, it's probably like location and like season. I don't blame her for not being happy. Winter sucks. Okay, next we have an example of my old, like too thin, kind of crappy DIY moss pole before I figured out that that is not a good way to do it. For a couple of reasons, they dry out way too fast. Um, and the second reason is that they are very wobbly and unstable. And yeah, I used to always make my moss holes this thin, but now I know better. Um, I can't even water this anymore because it makes the moss pole way too heavy. This would just fall over. It leans so much like, yeah, I really need to get this plant off of this moss pole. It is on my list. It is on my plant chore to do list that is a mile long. Um, but this is my medium medium silver. I love this plant so much. Like it is absolutely gorgeous and it has been such a joy to grow. So this year I'm gonna be restarting this plant and getting it on a better moss pole. I'm probably either gonna do like a trifolia one or a DIY wire one probably. Look at the newest leaf. I thought it was gonna come in like really small and unhappy, but it came in stunning. So I'm just thrilled about that, but it's not even like attached to the pole anymore. So I really need to chop this because this plant is not happy if it doesn't have something to climb. Um, these are just gonna shoot out runners if they're not climbing something. They need something to climb and they need adequate light or else they're just gonna run on you. However, I will say, I used to think that these needed really bright light, but now I don't think that they actually need as bright as I thought because it's like been doing great all throughout the winter and we get really like gloomy dark winters here where I am. So I don't know. This plant has really put up with a lot from me, honestly, and from our weather here. So he's gonna have a glow up this year for sure. Next is one that is literally like not even, this moss pole is just chilling here at this point. Like it's not doing anything. I don't water it. This plant is so overgrown. Like I kind of like, if this wasn't so wobbly, I would like the way that this looks because it just looks like kind of wild and cool. Um, and I really like the like shade of green that this plant is. So this is actually my Epipremnum skeleton key. Um, and I really want to talk about this one today because I totally forgot about this plant when I was showing all of my Epipremnum. I did like a Pothos Epipremnum collection video. And I don't know why I just like, this one completely slipped my mind. I guess because it's so low maintenance, it lives in pond 
and I just like, I don't know, I just completely forgot to show it, show it. And I was getting comments from people asking if I still have my skeleton key, and yes, I do. This is him right here, uh, grows like an absolute weed. This is honestly like one of the fastest growing plants. It is so crazy. If you're not familiar with this plant, it has that name because as the leaves mature, they get like a key shape, um, which is really freaking cool. So it's another one where, you know, you want it to climb because you want to encourage that mature leaf shape, which is why I had on this, this moss pole, but it literally outgrew it within like a month. And then it was just like too much for me to keep up with and I neglected it. It's still living its best life, but yeah, it obviously needs to be tamed, which I will be doing. Anyways, I did get a few leaves that were like, show no, not that one, that one's just weird. Um, showing some of that cool, you can see like it's kind of was starting on that one. Um, I have a smaller one that like really looked key-like, which was really cool, let me find it. Oh, right here, look at this, like, are you kidding me? That is so freaking cool. And it's so small. I was so shocked when I saw it come out with the shape, like what the heck? Um, so yeah, some of them are really trying to get that shape and they're just kind of like curving there, but some of them are kind of getting that shape, which is so cool. This one is like kind of trying, you know? Anyways, it's such a unique one. Okay, this gal is just a little itty bitty one, but she is growing up a moss plank that I made. So I figured I would include her in this video. This is my variegated vanilla orchid and it is growing right off of this moss plank situation, as you can see. So I'm going to be cutting her or doing something soon, but I just love the way that this plant looks and these root in so quickly to moss. These really love climbing. Those roots are looking to attach to whatever they can. So yeah, this plant has grown really well in here and I'm just so happy with how it looks. I think it looks so cute, especially with these little dragonfly clips in there. How fun, how fun. Oh, oh my gosh, oh my, I just dropped her. She's okay. Next, we have my Philodendron Barantianum, which was a plant that I really despised for a long time. Um, before I even got one, I just didn't like the way that they looked. Now I love them. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know why I changed my tune. I just, I don't know. I really like the way that they look now. I think that the silver leaves are so cute and I really love um, the way that mine is growing up this. This is a thickly pole again. I love that it looks, the way it looks on here. I have multiple vines growing up, so it's kind of like more full. These do allegedly size up. I mean, not allegedly, I know that they do. <laughs> the leaves can size up to being a lot larger. Usually only see them with smaller leaves um, or like I guess more commonly see them with smaller leaves, but the leaves can get large. I find that mine aren't really sizing up even though it's rooted into here. Um, like I can see the roots in the back and it's growing really well. It seems to be happy, but the leaves just don't seem to want to size up for me. This one is new at the top. It's actually still, they have kind of a pinky tone when they're fresh and it's still like hardening off. So it could still expand to being a little bit bigger, but yeah, maybe I will put an extension onto here and see if I can get some um, size increases on any of the vines as it grows up. I don't know, but anyways, I do really like the way that this little setup looks. I think that it is very cute. And I really do love the way that these clear moss poles look. I think that they look quite sleek, but the only thing is that they will show algae growth through um, over time. I think that's kind of going to be inevitable, but yeah, it is a really like cool look other than that. The next one is in pretty much the exact same setup as the Philodendron Brantianum, and that is my Philodendron Burl Marks Fantasy. Let me give you a closer look of this one, actually. The leaves are so pretty on this. Now, I struggled for a long time to get this plant to size up. You can see the leaves are very small down here. Got it on this pole, started rooting in, and eventually I am getting larger leaves. So these are really unique leaves, honestly. I think that they're so pretty. They have like a sparkly sheen to them. They have like a really cool kind of pattern. The color is beautiful. It's more of this like silvery, bluey green color. So I do love this philodendron a lot. I'm not sure what's happened to the new leaf that was trying to come in. I'm gonna have to cut that off. It's not going to you know, turn into anything, it's just going to die. It got really caught and yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, that's unfortunate, but um, I do have, oh my goodness, is it happening on the other one too? I don't know why these are getting stuck lately. I'm gonna have to look into that. 
but yeah, I have two vines up here. This has done like relatively well until now when these leaves are getting stuck. So I'm not too sure what's going on there. I'm gonna have to look into that. Um, this is pretty much the same as the brandy setup, except for this is the more opaque version of the moss pool, which honestly, I wasn't as much of a fan of it before, but now I kind of am because it doesn't really show the algae through it. So it looks kind of nice. I don't know, they both work. Um, anyways, yeah, philodendron, Bromark's Fantasy. Yeah, I guess I'll just be kneeling down here for the smaller plants so that I can show you closer up. Um, so this is my philodendron Charonier. Now, you may be wondering why this is not on a pole and I'm showing it in my moss pole collection video. It's because it was on a moss pole when I showed it the um, other times I filmed this video and I really wanted to show like the progress of it. So maybe I'll put like that those clips over top um, Because this was the top cut. I cut this plant up, which is why I can't show you it on a moss pole. I cut this up um, That video also turned out botched which the audio was botched on that which is very annoying um, But yeah, this is the newest leaf that I wanted to show because it is just so gorgeous I love the sheen on these. I love the like texture these ripples or whatever um, Yeah, I love the philodendron Charonier, Charonier very much so I'm rooting cuttings of this and then I'm gonna be restarting it on a moss pole it was on kind of like a kind of like just a crappy moss pole that was supposed to be temporary while it acclimated to my home. Now I am propagating and um, I'm gonna be putting it on its like permanent moss pole home. So yeah, it did grow up on the moss pole. It rooted in really well. Um, the root system was really healthy. So yeah, I'm just so excited to see the future of this plant. And even though it's not on a moss pole right now, it is going to be sometime soon. So I wanted to include it in this video. Okay, next we have my philodendron rinifier, which is a very unique plant. This is one that I'm really excited about growing this year. It has like these kind of rippled serrated leaves uh, with variegation. Mine isn't super variegated, like there is variegation on some of the leaves. I just ran out and bought this when they popped up at our big box stores here. And I definitely didn't get like the best specimen, but I've had a lot of people comment that they had one that didn't have high variegation and now it does. So. We'll see what happens in the future. Um, I did get this really interesting leaf that I wanted to show you guys. It came out like, it's supposed to be half variegated, but it just didn't develop the other half of the leaf. It only developed up to here. Like this portion is a green leaf on that side. And then this is just missing. So I have no idea what is up with that, but it's really interesting. And that's such like a bright, vivid yellow. Whenever it catches my eye, I always think it's a dead leaf in my cabinet, but it's not. It's just like a half moon leaf that just never, developed properly, I guess. I don't know, it still looks really cool. But um, yeah, so maybe I will end up getting some pretty cool variegation on this plant. Anyways, I recently got this on a moss pole and it's actually taking to it so well, which makes me really excited to see the progress of this and see like the leaves size up and everything. You can see a big juicy root in the back of this pole, which is really, really cool. This plant has pretty tight internodes, which is why I just have it on this short little pole. This is a pole from Propagation Diaries, which actually cracked as I was assembling it, but it seems to be like, okay. Anyways, I think it'll work fine for this plant. Yeah, really excited to see this one size up. I have another plant that's similar to this that is doing really well on a pole. We'll be getting to that one. Um, but yeah, this kind of like leaf style leaf shape i'm really into this year and yeah i just can't wait to see what happens and look it's trying to put out a new leaf i'm not quite sure what's going on there it's kind of doing something funky but hopefully he will sort himself out i have to restrain myself from going in there with tweezers maybe i'll do the q-tip thing everyone is always yelling at me to do should i do it right now should i do it right now this has been like this for a good few days so i think it's fair that i try to rescue it Okay, let's, oh, it's kind of like an awkward, kind of an awkward angle. Hopefully you guys will be able to see. Oh, oh, I'm just gonna try to like, see, I feel like the Q-tip is too big and that's the problem with this. Oh, I feel like I'm hurting it. Oh, maybe if we can get, oh, oh my gosh. I'm really not feeling good about this. I need to go get my tweezers. <laughs> wow, didn't know we'd be doing surgery today. Oh. 
Oh, this poor thing was supposed to be a leaf. I don't know if it's going to pull through though. Okay, I got it free. I don't know if this leaf is going to make it, but look like the, it looks like the variegation would have been so stunning. I don't know if that pink is showing up on camera, but it's like super pink. Oh, shoot. I don't know why it's so small. Are you well? Oh, I don't think you're well. Okay, well, we'll see what happens here. <laughs> this plant's putting out some weird leaves lately. Oh! Okay, we're having a time. We're having a time today. Okay, next we have my philodendron gigas. This is technically on a pole, but it hasn't actually rooted in yet because we recently put this on like in a video that I did a couple of weeks ago in my like choosing my plant chores randomly video, we propagated this, well, not well, kind of. We took this off of the old pole because it had outgrown it, um, cut it up, and now I'm restarting it lower down on the pole so it can grow up some more size up, and then I'm either gonna extend this or chop it, I'm not sure yet. This is a closed style back, closed back style pole again. This one is from, from North Shore Tropicals. The gigas was so rooted into it before, so I'm sure that it's just going to root back into it quickly again. Um, it was actually really cool to take it off of the pole and just see the root systems on each node in there. So if you haven't seen that video, check it out. Um, but yeah, we're just starting over again. I'm sure he's gonna do fine. These ones are looking a little sad because these are just like propagations down here. We'll see what happens. This one feels like it might be a goner, honestly, but I think this one's okay. I have like three pots of philodendron gigas now, so I'm not worried. All right, now we're moving on to the plants in my bedroom. So I am busting out some of my favorites. This is my beautiful philodendron majestic. I love philodendron hybrids, you guys. Like honestly, I've loved, well, I've loved almost every one I've had. My philodendron McDowell is like really testing my patience these days, but the rest of them I absolutely love. They grow so well and they're so beautiful. So this is my Majestic, um, which is a cross between Philodendron Varicosum and Philodendron Soderoi. And it is just stunning. I've recently like scrubbed all of the sulfur treatment off of my plants, but some of them, it just like is, was so hard to get off and it's still in some of the crevices of the Majestic, but I think I got it mostly off. Um, anyways, this plant is just like, wow. I am obsessed with it and I know I feel like I talk about it all the time. Um, so I recently put these propagations into potting mix and um, gave them a moss pole, the, this closed back thickly moss pole, as you can see. And I don't know if any of the nodes have rooted into here yet. I don't think so. It hasn't been on here for very long, but I do have two separate vines and we do have a new leaf that is emerging out of the caterpillar there of one of them, as you can see. And we actually do have growth starting to emerge from the growth point on the other one down here. So I'm really excited to see what this plant has in store for us. Like I said, I love it so much. I find it to be such an easy plant. Um, honestly, all of my philodendron hybrids are easy except for my McDowell, but I think that that's just like specific to mine because nobody else seems to have the problems that I'm having. Um, but anyways, yeah, just one of my absolute favorites. And then we have my other philodendron that has that unique kind of serrated edge leaf. This is my philodendron narrow, also known as philodendron jungle boogie. And I am very into this plant right now. I know I've been talking a lot about it recently, um, but it's, it's for good reason. Like it is already growing so well for me. I got it on this pole not too long ago, like probably two to three months ago-ish. Um, and I was expecting it to take a while to start growing into the pole and like sizing up and everything, but it was like immediately, like it rooted in so quickly. And these plants aren't usually grown on moss poles. They do have really tight internodes. A lot of people just grow them just like in a pot without any support or anything. And they just kind of can look like bushy and pretty like that. But I really wanted to try growing it up a pole. I wanted to see how much I could get the leaves to size up and just like, I don't know, I thought it would give just a unique look and be a fun little project with this plant. So that's what I've been doing. And it has rooted in so well. The pole is full of roots and it is sized up a ton too. Like if you look at the older leaves, um, which wasn't even like, there's not even a huge time difference between these older leaves and the newer leaves. I think that this is the newest one, which is just gorgeous, but yeah, it is massive. So I'm just really excited 
to see what this plant is going to look like by the end of the year. This is, again, a very easy philodendron, a very accessible philodendron. These are typically not expensive. They're typically pretty easy to find, at least where I am. Um, and it is very fast growing. So we are going to get a new leaf out of that catafil sometime soon. And I'm really looking forward to it. It's just been so satisfying to watch start to watch it start to grow up this pole. Words are hard. All right, so my next one is my philodendron varicosum, which is another one of my favorite plants. I love this plant so much. I love all of the traits. The backs of the leaves are beautiful. When the new leaves unfurl, it is just like so cool to see. It has fuzzy petioles. The leaves can size up really big. Um, it has kind of like a velvety sheen to it. Uh, it's just such a gorgeous, unique philodendron. So it's one of my favorites. Um, this is another one that I have chopped since I originally <laughs> filmed this video. So I do have the uh, tops of the plants to show you um, because these leaves are just like so big and beautiful So I recently cut those off and they're rooting in water literally did that yesterday So it has not been long enough for them to like root or anything yet. But yeah, this plant was You know bigger Anyways, I do still have the base of it obviously on this pole Which is why I thought I would include it in this video again on a closed back pole again We have two vines growing up and yeah, it's done super well. I find that it roots into the moss really easily. I know philodendron varicosum is known as being a little bit more of a finicky philodendron. Um, and I don't know, like it honestly hasn't been too bad for me. A lot of people swear that they're spider mite magnets. I've never had a problem with spider mites on mine. Look at how fuzzy the petioles are on these ones. Oh, can you see? Oh my gosh, like look at that. Oh, it is so cool. Wow, just like such a unique plant. Anyways, my plan is to start these on a pole, like these larger cuttings. I really wanted to air layer. That was my plan with this um, because that helps to like retain the leaf size, but it just didn't work out. I did air layer and then the internodes got super long and I like couldn't really use that. And then I just like put it off and the plant grew wild. And now here I am starting kind of at square one, but these cuttings are bigger. So I'm hoping we're starting a little bit further up from square one, but we'll see what happens. All right, next we have my philodendron serpents, which is another hairy, petioled dude. Very cool, unique plant. Again, has a less unique leaf, I would say, but the petioles definitely have like very long, um, usually like dense hairs. Mine is not the best specimen to show off. I actually recently featured this in my hardest plants video, if you haven't seen that, um, because I do really struggle with this one. And it did have a new leaf that was coming out um, that I was talking about the when I had filmed this video before. And then I went to put this plant back after I had filmed and I snapped it off. So there's no new leaf anymore. It just looks like that. So that's kind of unfortunate. But yeah, this is like, I don't know. This is kind of becoming a project plant so that I need to figure out what I'm gonna do with next because it is at the top of the pole, as you can see. So yeah, only time can tell with my philodendron serpents. Okay, next we have another stunning philodendron hybrid. This is my philodendron glorious, and it is a hybrid of philodendron gloriosum and melanochrysum. I always say if you struggle with melanochrysum, like I have, <laughs> opt for the glorious. I don't think it's as easy as the splendid by any means, but I do think it is a lot easier than the melanochrysum and you can at least get the so leaves to size up easily, which is nice. You just can't really underwater this. Um, the leaves will rip and tear and just not come in nicely if you do, which I've learned the hard way. Anyways, I have a ton of vines on mine. So yeah, it's a very full kind of bushy plant and it's really starting to size up and look very gorgeous. It is just on one of my DIY mesh poles, which has been doing a great job for this plant, honestly. I think I'm probably gonna take propagations from this and restart rather than add an extension. I could add an extension maybe and see if I can get some even bigger leaves um, by the time I chop. Crispy catafil again. But I don't know, I'm kind of undecided. I do need to decide quickly though, because um, it's already growing over the pole. So I need to make a decision. It's done really well on the pole. It loves to climb. And I'm really starting to take more of an interest in this plant now that it is sizing up a bit. Um, and now that I am being more consistent with the watering and everything, it's doing a little bit better for me. And yeah, I'm really excited to watch this grow even more. 
Okay, so right here I have my Mother Monstera Albo, um, which is on a Trifolia self-watering moss pole. It's been on this moss pole for years now. Uh, I've recently cut this plant up. So this is like the base. I have three Monstera Albos. This is like the base. And then at the top, we have a fresh new leaf. It only has a small amount of white, which is, you know, disappointing. It's still an absolutely gorgeous leaf. It's still kind of hardening off, so it's very shiny. I guess I'm going to wait and see what the next leaf looks like before I kind of decide what my move is going to be. But I am debating just entirely chopping this plant up. I really want like a nice bushy one for myself and then maybe I will possibly sell the cuttings or something like that. But yeah, this plant has been so easy for me. Like Monstera Albo is like miles easier than the Thai constellation in my experience. But yeah, it loves climbing. It's rooted onto the pole immediately and it's just been very, very easy for me. I will show you the mid cut at the same time because that one is also on a moss pole. So this came from the other Monstera Albo, like I said, and it is on this moss pole. It is very rooted into here. It's doing, oh, there's like a fresh root right there. Nice. It is doing really well, um, giving me a growth point right here. Like I said, I do have three Monstera Albos, but the other one isn't on a pole yet. Uh, I probably, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do, honestly, with these. Everything is still kind of up in the air with my Monstera Albos. And I'm probably gonna wait until I actually see the new leaves on these before I decide what I'm gonna do, if I'm gonna like sell or keep or like, I don't know. But yeah, very hardy plants, love to climb. And this like sturdy pole has worked really well for them. I just like love the variegation on this. Like how pretty, it's like kind of marbled and has that sectoral piece there. You are gorgeous, except for your browning. Okay, I think we're on to the last two. And this next one is my beautiful Philodendron SP Silver, which I love so much. This plant has actually been at a bit of a standstill throughout the winter. It has not grown, I don't think it's grown since like September or something like that. So it's been many months without a new leaf. Honestly, I don't blame it though. Like, you know, we all need to rest sometimes and it's not declining or anything. It's just kind of staying the same. So like, fair enough. I'm really hoping that once spring officially arrives, this one will start growing for me again because look at the last leaf. Wait, was this the last? Yeah, look at the last leaf. Like, are you kidding me? That is massive, that is stunning. Oh my goodness, I love this plant so much. It has been so easy in my care as well, um, besides the like not growing throughout the winter thing. But in the sense that it never yellows, it never drops leaves, it never complains about being underwatered. It is climbing up this DIY moss pole, which has been working really well for it actually. And I know that some of these SP silvers are crawlers and some of them are climbers. And there's just in general, a lot of confusion about the plants that we are calling philodendron SP silver or SP Columbia. I'm not really sure if there's been an update or like clarification in this whole debacle. So if you know, then you can leave it in the comment section but some of them seem to crawl and some of them seem to climb. Mine arrived to me. It looked like it wanted to climb and it is seems to be very happy climbing. So that's just how I'm growing it. And yeah, I'm just, I'm really happy with how it's looking and how it's doing. And yeah, I've just had a great experience with it. Okay, next we have another big one. This is my Philodendron Camposportuanum, which is on this big moss pole. It's a DIY plastic mesh pole and there's vines pretty much all around it. It is more full on, oh my goodness, on the front here. <clears throat> and it's also like growing off of it because it's just growing wild and I haven't done anything. Look at that um, leaf right there. It's giving me some really stunning like leaves that are getting a little bit more mature. I can't tell if that's in focus or not, but yeah, wow, look at that. And this is a new one that's still hardening off as well, it's so pretty. This plant is really unique and I still feel like it's not one that a lot of people have. Yeah, on a lot of these vines, I'm getting that more mature leaf shape. Kind of has like a fish shape, which is pretty cool. It's also growing off of the pole down here. So my plan for this is probably to take propagations and restart this. And as much as I love this like bushy, full, like, you know, 20 vines in this thing um, situation, I think that I'm probably just going to do something like two or three cuttings growing up a thickly pole or like the closed back moss pole 
just because I feel like, I don't know, I like the way that this looks like um, from afar or like as filling out space in a room, but I feel like I almost don't get to appreciate it as much. When there's only a couple vines, I feel like I really like see and appreciate every single new leaf that comes in and it's like very exciting. But for this, I just feel like I'm like, I don't know, it just kind of all blends together. I, I don't know if anyone else feels this way or like knows what I mean. But yeah, when there's like less vines, I almost appreciate the leaves more and like focus on that plant a little bit more. So I really want to put some energy into, I'm gonna cut off these like nice fishy leaves and um, propagate those and then start those on a pole and just like really try to get them to size up and become more mature. Because like I said, this one is really cool and unique, especially when it's mature. And I also love the color. Um, I love the color of the new leaves when they come in. I love the color once the leaves like uh, get older or harden off. It has a really pretty sheen to it. Yeah, I just think I'm going to start growing a, a different version of this setup. <laughs> But it has been really cool to see this like get really full and lush like yeah it's just gorgeous okay i think that that's all of them um i hope that i didn't miss any if you stuck around to the end thank you so so much leave me a comment down below i would love to hear your thoughts let me know if you grow plants on moss poles as well i would love to hear your thoughts any challenges any any wins that you've had. Also any tips. Like I said, I love just learning from each other. I love sharing information. You guys have helped me out so much and I'm sure that you have helped other people down in the comments. So thank you so much for that. All right, well, thank you guys so much for watching. You're the best and I will see you in the next one. Bye.